Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. I'm plugging for another statue. Michelangelo, I'm taking a break. So you want to hear my story? Okay. This is my sister Zariah, and she can tell you everything. I've got to get back to this. Artists are so impatient. Hope you enjoy. Come with me. I'll tell you all about my brother. In the Old Testament books of 1 and 2 Samuel, we learn a fascinating story of a shepherd boy who became king. This is the story of David. We begin with a conversation between God and the prophet Samuel. Samuel, I have rejected Saul as the king of Israel. I'm sorry I ever made him king. His heart has turned from me. Take a flask of oil and go to Bethlehem. Find a man named Jesse. The man I have chosen to be Israel's next king is one of his sons. No, Lord, I can't do that. Saul will have me killed if I anoint another king. You will tell the people that you've come to lead them in worship, and I'll let you know what I'll let you know what to do next. I'll show you the one to anoint. Yes, sir. So Samuel did what God told him to. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the people greeted them, but they were all a little nervous. Samuel always brought a message from the Lord, but it wasn't always pleasant. Samuel, what an honor to have you in Bethlehem. Is something wrong? Oh no, nothing's wrong. Come to lead you in worship. Go gather everyone and get them together. Make sure you bring your husband, Jesse, though, and your boys. Jesse, Jesse, Samuel has come to lead us in worship, and he asks that you are our boys to there. He makes you nervous. Everything makes you nervous. Where are the boys? I don't know. They're all over Bethlehem, except for David. He's way out with the sheep. I doubt Samuel will miss him anyways. I forget about him most of the time. Let's find the others. This is my wife, Elizabeth, and these are my sons. This is my oldest, Eliab. Obviously, one. Tall, strong. This was Looks aren't everything, Samuel. Don't be impressed by his looks or his size. I judge people differently than you humans do. People look at the outside, I look at the heart. Now, who else is This is Abinadab. No. Well, this is Shamal. No. Jesse continued to present the sons to Samuel, but each time God said no. Jesse, God has sent me here to anoint one of your sons for his great purpose. And each time when he presented one of your sons, he said no. Do you have any other sons? Well, there is David, but we would let him watch the sheep most of the time. Go get him now. I will stand right here until he is back. Elia! Run! Go get your brother! They all stood there, waiting for David to come. David, you gotta come with me right now. Samuel, this is my youngest son, David. He is the one, Samuel. He will be the next king of Israel. Anoint him. David, son of Jesse, God has chosen you for a great purpose. Please be. Jesse, our baby boy, chosen by God. Samuel anointed David's head with oil. The Spirit of God entered him and stayed with him for the rest of his life. The Israelites had enemies, and the time came for them to fight the Philistines. But they had a secret weapon, Goliath. He was nearly ten feet tall. No army stood a chance against him. It was like he was fighting children. I'm Goliath, and I will slay you all! Ah! 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 Come get me! In the Philistine camp, two soldiers were discussing their champion. Are you worried about the battle? No way, we've got Goliath. Yeah, you're right. If you kicked him in the heart, you'd break your toe. <laughs> he is brutal. We should have to do a thing. 
The time came for a battle. The Philistines led by Goliath were on one side, and the Israelites were on the other side. Goliath stood in the very front and boldly shouted, Hey, Israelites! Why bother using your whole army? Send out your best fighter to fight me. If he wins, the Philistines will all become your slaves. But if I kill him, you will all become our slaves. I challenge you. Send out your man. Well, you heard him, guys. Who's going out there to fight the giant? You're the king. You should go. No, not me. It wouldn't be right for a king to take all the glory. People like their king to be humble. Maybe I should say this, sir. But you sound like a bit of a chicken. A chicken? I'm not a chicken. If you're so brave, how about you go out there and fight? There is no way I'm going out there. We need to send Iliad. He's pretty strong. I'm not going. He's so big, he can stomp on me. I'll admit it. I'm scared. I think we're doomed. Maybe if we should ignore him, he'll go away. Goliath and the Philistines did not go away. Each morning and evening for 40 days, Goliath took his place in front of his army and made a speech. One day, Jesse sent his youngest son David to bring his brother some food at the battle. When he arrived, Goliath had just begun to taunt the Israelites. What is going on here? Well, this giant Goliath comes out every day, morning and evening, trying to get one of us to come out and fight him. Yeah, the guy who kills the giant will have it made. The king will give him a huge reward and his daughter for the life. No one can beat him. We don't have one guy as big as him. So what are you doing? Get out there! Crazy? He's a giant. We're all way too afraid. I cannot believe this. Who does he think he is? Does he not know that we are the army of the one true God? And all of you, where's your faith? Do you not know that God will bless us with this victory? David, what are you doing here? You just come to have a front row seat at the bloody battle? Aren't you at home taking care of the sheep? What's your problem? Can I not even speak? I'm going to talk to King Saul. King Saul, do not worry. I am David, son of Jesse, and I am here to go kill this giant. You can't fight Goliath. You're too young and inexperienced. And he's been fighting since before you were born. And he's a giant. I'm a shepherd, though. Whenever a lion or bear has came from one of my sheep, I've killed him. And I know I would do the same to this Philistine king. I know God would deliver me from this war. Okay, David, go. May God be with you. Wait! Take my sword and shield for protection. Look, king, I can't even move and all that. I'll just stick to what I know best. David took a sling and chose five stones from the brook. Then he headed towards Goliath. Are you kidding me? Is this the best the Israelites have? I'm insulted. You're barely big enough for a snack. You come to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of Lord Almighty. This battle belongs to the Lord. How dare you speak to me that way? You're mine! David was not afraid. He took one of his stones and slung it at Goliath. It hit him hard in the forehead. The giant Philistine crashed face down in the dirt. Goliath was dead. David ran over, took Goliath's own sword, and cut off his head. My king. Our God has given us victory over Goliath and the Philistines. Well done. What did you say your name was? I'm David, son of Jesse from Bethlehem. David, I can see that God is with you. Won't you come live with me in my palace? You will do great things in my kingdom and my army. It would be an honor, sir. So David lived in Saul's home and was put in charge of the army. Everyone loved David. He was very powerful and very popular. David was doing very well. But as David got more popular, Saul got more jealous. David, David, David. That's all I hear. What's so special about him? I'm the king. Why don't people love me? Did you call me? I thought I heard my name. Oh, um, yes. I was just having a bad day and wondering if you would play me some music. I'd be happy to. I'm gonna nail him to the wall. That'll make me feel better. Whoops! It slipped right out of my hand. You almost hit me. That could have been real bad. Yeah, that could have been really bad. Now go on. Play me some more. Okay. Oh, I missed again. I, I mean, I almost hit you again. Maybe we should stop for today. I think I hear Jonathan calling. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. King Saul almost hit David twice with a spear. Do you think King Saul wants to kill David? Sure seems like it. Very suspicious. We need to keep an eye on him. I think he's losing his mind. Saul's jealousy of David got even worse. It didn't help that Saul's son was David's best friend, and Saul's daughter, Michael, was David's wife. One day, Saul was plotting to kill David, but Michael found out. David, my father's planning to kill you in the morning. You must get out of here by tonight. His men are already waiting at the door. I don't want to leave you. If your dad knows you help me, he'll kill you. I'll be fine. I've got a plan. I'll have to go out the window. 
Okay, I'll go. Thank you for helping me, Michael. I know it's not easy going against your dad. It's okay. He's crazy and you're my husband. Now go! Michael decided to make a decoy to buy David some extra time. David ran away as fast as he could to find Samuel, the man who had anointed him. He was in Ramah. Samuel, Samuel, please help me! Saul's trying to kill me. Can I stay with you? Of course. I knew Saul would try to kill you. God will keep you safe. One morning at David and Michael's house, Saul's men stormed the house at daybreak. We're here for David with orders from King Saul. He's sick in bed, and trust me, you do not want what he's got. I've heard some pretty gross stuff all night. I know, I don't want to be sick. We need to tell the king and see what he says. He probably wouldn't want us to bring some disease in the palace anyways. We'll be back. Oh good, you're back. Where's David? I'm so ready to kill that boy. I will be number one in my palace. Well, we didn't bring him. He's sick in bed. What does that matter? I'm killing him soon. Well, we didn't think he wanted his dirty germs in the palace. I don't care about his germs. Bring him, his bed, and his germs if you have to. Now! We're back. Sick or not, David, you're coming with us. He's gone. Michael, you lied to us. I had to lie. He said he would kill me if I didn't help him escape. King Saul's not going to be happy. Not at all. King Saul, he's gone. No! What have I done that your father is so determined to kill me? Nothing. You have done nothing but help him and defeat his enemies. I promise you will not die. My father tells me everything, so I'll inform you of his plan. You're my best friend, David. I'll make sure nothing happens to you. Thank you. Jonathan, I have a plan. Will you help me? Absolutely. So David told Jonathan the plan. Jonathan would find out what his father Saul's intentions were. Jonathan would shoot arrows out in the field toward a boulder where David would be hiding. If David was safe and Saul had given up on killing him, Jonathan would tell a servant to look for the arrows before he got to the boulder. David would be safe and go home. But if Jonathan told the servant to look for the arrows past the boulder, he would be telling David to run for his life and never return. King Saul would not rest until David was dead. So what do you think? It's a good plan, but I'm sad. If I give you the signal to run, I may never see you again. I know. I'll miss you, my friend. I'll miss you too, but at least I'll know you're safe. Jonathan sadly went out to shoot the arrows to tell David to leave. Go! The arrows went very far. They went way past the big boulder. We may never see them again. Of course, this meant for David to run away and never return until Saul was dead. Saul took his men to search for David. He came to a cave and went in to relieve himself. He didn't know that David was also in this cave. Look, Saul, David, the Lord has brought him to you. Hi, hi. I'll be back in a minute, guys. I gotta take care of some business. David silently crept up beside Saul. Instead of killing him, he cut off the corner of his robe. He is the anointed king of Israel, chosen by God. I will not kill him, and neither will you. When and how he dies is not up to us, but God. After Saul left the cave, David followed him and called out to him. My lord, King Saul, why do you listen to the men telling you I want to kill you? Today with your own eyes, you can see that I could have killed you easily. Here is proof of that. I cut this from your robe just a minute ago. You are the Lord's anointed king, and I will never hurt you. Please stop chasing me and go home. David, is it really you? You are a better man than I am. I can see now why God wants you to be king. You've only been good to me, and I repay you by chasing you to kill you? May the Lord bless you for sparing my life. I'll go home now and leave you alone. Saul did go home, and David never saw him again. David and some of his loyal men stayed in the wilderness to keep away from Saul. There was a wealthy man in the area called Nabal, which means fool. His wife was Abigail. Nabal was mean and stingy man. Abigail was intelligent and beautiful. David knew that Nabal was having a feast, and he sent his men to ask Nabal to share some of his food with him. Nabal, we come in peace with greetings and blessings from David. We know you are a wealthy man and have prepared a feast for your family and servants. Would you be so kind as to share your blessings with us? Who is this David? For all I know, he could be a runaway slave. You 
think I'm going to share my good bread and meat with someone I don't even know? The men went back and told David everything that Nabal had said. He was furious. David, Nabal said no. Get your swords. Nabal will be sorry for his greed. Meanwhile, Abigail heard what her husband Nabal had said. She was horrified. She immediately flew into action. Quick, help me gather food and gifts to take to David. He will kill us for what Nabal has done. I've got to get to David before he gets to us. Come on, we have to hurry. My master David, may I speak with you? My husband Nabal is a fool. Foolishness eases from every pore of his body. His name even means fool. I wasn't there when your men arrived. Please accept these gifts. Then don't kill us for what my idiot husband. I know God is with you and you wouldn't want to bear the guilt of this. Please have mercy on us. Praise God. He sent you to stop me. If you had not come, I would have wiped out your whole family. Abigail, you are a good woman with good sense. Return home in peace. Thank you. Thank you so much. When Abigail told Nabal what she had done, he had a heart attack and fell into a coma. Ten days later, he was dead. When David learned what Nabal was dead, he sent for Abigail to be brought to him to be his wife. She was very happy to be married to David instead of that fool, Nabal. Time passed. Saul and Jonathan both died in battle, and David became the new king. He was 30 years old. He became very powerful because God was with him. One of the things David wanted to do as a king was to get the Ark of the Covenant back from their enemies and bring it back to God's people. When the Ark entered the city, the celebration broke out, led by David himself. People of Israel, I brought our most precious possession back from the hands of our enemies to its rightful home in Jerusalem. There is only one thing to do. People of Jerusalem! Party time! Yeah. Bless my soul, Dave was on a roll. Person of the week in every new opinion poll. What a pro, Dave could stop a show. Point him at a giant and you're talking TKO. He was a no one, a zero, zero. Now he's a hojo, he's a hero. He was a kid with his head down back. From zero to And I am thankful for God for bringing the ark back to us. I am thankful for Him, not you. So join me or get out of my way. God blessed David and his kingdom. All the Israelites' enemies were being defeated, and David had a new palace. He had many wives and children, but apparently that wasn't enough. He was about to make a big mistake.
So Cyrus, how are our troops doing against the Ammonites? Very well, sir. Drop us in a message. Just as you did say that we got it. I knew they could do it without me. I just didn't feel like you. Wow! Do you see that girl? Who is she? She is beautiful. I believe her name is Bathsheba, wife of Uriah the Hittite, and he's, I believe he's away in the battle. Well, go get her. Send her to the palace. I've got to meet her. King David, this is Bathsheba. Well, hello, Bathsheba. You look nervous. Don't be nervous. I'm the king, and I'm a nice guy. It's an honor to be in your presence, my king. May I ask why I've been called to the palace? Am I in trouble? No, you are definitely not in trouble. I saw you walking by earlier today and knew I had to meet you. You are one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Well, my husband Uriah says that to me. Oh yeah, your husband. Well, I just want to let you know that I think you are gorgeous. And if anything were to happen to your husband, I will marry you and take care of you. And you will have nothing to worry about. Well, you're very kind, my king. But Uriah is in perfect health, and he is a very skilled and loyal soldier. I believe he will live a long, long life. Well, you never know what could happen in battle. One month later. <sighs> I'm pregnant. Bathsheba sent a message to King David that she was going to have his child. David knew he had to act quickly to get her husband Uriah home from the battle. He sent a message to Joab, commander of the army, to send Uriah home to the palace. Uriah, it's great to have you here. It's an honor, my king. I'm always at your service. I've heard a lot of great things about you, so I thought I'd give you a vacation. Go home to your wife. I met her the other day, and let me tell you, you are one lucky man, Uriah. You don't have to tell me. She means everything to me. She's a great cook, a great singer, and she's beautiful. So, so is she your only wife? Yes, of course. All we have is each other. Well, isn't that sweet? So you're going to go home right now, right? Actually... I think it would be better if I were back in battle. It's just not fair if I were able to go home and see my beautiful wife if no one else was. Well, that's good. Now I have a message for Joab. Can you please deliver it for me? It would be an honor, sir. Poor Uriah didn't know that he carried his own death sentence back to the battle. David had instructed Joab to put him at the front of the heated battle where he would surely be killed. David wanted Bathsheba as his wife and would do whatever it took to have her. Oh, hey Uriah, how was your visit home? It was short but pleasant. The king was really nice to me, and he was genuinely interested in my family, especially Bathsheba. Oh, I forgot, I was supposed to give this letter to you. Oh, thank you. Hmm. Why does he want Uriah dead? I don't get it, but he's the king. Hey Uriah, I'm promoting you. You will lead our men against the fiercest enemy fighters. Head on up to the front. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So here's the plan. David has beef with Uriah. So when when I say go, we all run the other way. All right? Sure. Bruh. All right. No kidding. George! <laughs> He's dead! Yeah! Yeah! Let's go, boys. So Uriah bravely went to the front of the heated battle. When he was attacked, Joab pulled everyone else back as David had told him to, leaving Uriah fighting alone. He was killed, and Bathsheba was now a widow. After Bathsheba's period of mourning was over, David sent for her to become his wife. They got married, and shortly after, they had a son. David, 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 God needs me to tell you a story. Okay, I haven't heard a good story in a long time. There were two men in the same city, one rich and one poor. The rich man had huge flocks of sheep and many herds of cattle. The poor man had nothing but one little lamb, which he had raised. They played with his children, ate from his plate, and slept in his home. It was basically his child. One day, a traveler dropped in on the rich man. He was too stingy to make a meal for his visitor with one of his own animals. So he took the poor man's lamb, cooked it, and served it to his guest. How dare he! That is terrible. That should not go unpunished. He should have to pay back four times what that lamb is worth. David, you are that man. And here's what God says to you. I made you king of Israel. I kept you safe from Saul. I gave you his daughter for a wife and other wives too. I gave you so much and would have given you anything you asked for. Why have you treated me with such contempt by doing something so evil? You murdered Uriah the Hittite so you could have his wife as your own. 
And now, because you did this, the hard times will come to your family. Oh no! I have sinned! I have sinned against my God! Yes, you have sinned, David. But that is not God's last words for you, because you are truly sorry. God forgives you. You will not die for it. He still loves you. But because of what you have done, the son born to you in Bathsheba will die. David and Bathsheba's child became sick at once. David prayed desperately, wouldn't go outside, and wouldn't even get off the floor. Holy God, please have mercy on me. Wash away the evil that I have done. I know I was so wrong, and I'm heartbroken knowing that I have disappointed you and hurt so many. Please, wash it all away and make me clean again. Create a clean heart in me and give me a spirit that is faithful to you. Let me feel joy again, knowing you love and forgive me. From now on, I live only to please you and tell others of your goodness and mercy. You are the Lord of my life, and I am your faithful servant. On the seventh day, the boy died. Everyone was afraid to tell David. David noticed his brothers whispering. This is so sad. I can't believe David's baby just died. And judging by the way he's been this week while the baby was sick, he's going to lose it. Let's go see him. My son dead? Yes, he just died. I'm so sorry, brother. Is there anything we can do to help? Help me, brother. Fix me some food. I'm going to worship, and I'll eat when I get back. We don't understand. While the baby was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that it's dead, you get up and eat? Well, while Charlie was alive, I fasted and prayed, hoping God would have mercy and let him live. But now that he is gone, why fast? I can't bring him back. I can only hope to get to him someday. I have learned my lesson, and I will live for God until that day comes. From now on, I'll be a better man and a better king. David went to comfort his wife. In time, they would have another son named Solomon. God had a special love for Solomon and blessed his life. David went back to the business of being king, fighting battles and ruling God's people, and God was pleased with him. He was known as a man after God's own heart. David was king for 40 years, and at the age of 70, his days were nearing an end. The big question on everyone's mind was who David was going to choose to be the next king. He had several sons, and of course, each mother wanted their son to be king. It got a little ugly. I know David will choose my son to be the next king. We've already planned his coronation. I don't think so, Michael. David said God himself sent me to him. I think he'll choose my son. Not so fast, ladies. You know that David loves me more than either one of you. He has blessed my Solomon with good looks and everything that he needs to be the next king. Queens, may I have your attention? King David is in his last hours. Bathsheba, he has asked for you and he wants Solomon too. See, I told you. Hey daddy, I'm here. So is mom. Did you want to talk to me? Solomon, my son, I choose you to take my place as king of Israel. I'm about to die, so you need to be strong. Do what God tells you. Follow God completely, and you will do well. God has promised this to me, but you must obey God to keep our family on the throne. I love you both. Go in peace. I'll do my best. Let's say your favorite song. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me on paths of righteousness, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David reads his last breath. Although he is not perfect, as none of us are, he truly loved God, and God loved his servant. He went from a shepherd boy to a king, David.
Hey man, it's David, Charlie Carpenter, coming to a theater near you. Tune in, shout us out, make it deep, you feel me? This my guard right here, mess with me, you get we this. We posted up, we finna go, we finna have a good movie. Finna have a great movie. If you wanna come invite your girlfriends, your aunts, your uncles, your daughters, we putting on a show. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you got a I look huge. Samuel, what an honor to have you met with him. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> forgot it. Okay. This is my oldest, Eliab. Got to be the one. Tall, straight, handsome, strong. This was easy. Okay. <laughs> Jesse. God has sent me here to anoint one of your sons for his great purpose. Uh, and each time one of your sons were presented, God said no. Do you have any other sons? Well, there is one more. David. Elio! Go get... Go get... Oh, my God. I'm running in. All right, kick... says David Rulat, it scares you. Okay. <laughs> okay. David! Does he not know that we are the one true army of our true <laughs> <laughs> army? Does he not know that we are the one true army? The army of our one true God. Start over. Two, one. 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 Two, one.
Okay. Oh. All right. gonna die. Yeah. <laughs> then we're gonna run that way. Can I say, I David got beat. Right All right. So David has beat. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't turn like that. Go. All right. So here's the plan. <laughs> All right. So here's the plan. Shoot. Okay. <laughs> What? That was that? <laughs> I'm stuck in it. Look at what he said. Don't move. Like, how do I go on a show determined to kill me? Stop. <laughs> 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 Your father is so determined to kill me. <laughs> Let's go. What? <laughs> I did it. What do you think? It's a good plan. But if I give you the signal. <laughs> it's a good out. plan. <laughs> Yo! The arrows went very far! We may never see them again. They are way past the big boulder. Today, we are filming the incredible Saw Dies scene. It's been and a pleasure working with this whole crew and team, and I'm sad to say that I have to go, but I think it's about time. Yeah. He is really unfortunate when it comes to learning lines, and he is not <laughs> Thank you for they can make fun all they want. <laughs> I am Groot. Thank you. Okay. The poor man had nothing but one little lamb, which he had raised. It played with his children, ate from his plate, and slept in his home. It was basically his child. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm always at the I forgot my line for a second. Uh, what, what, what is it? What a little Bathsheba. What's my next part? <laughs> my lord! King Saul, why do you listen to the men telling you I want to kill you today? <laughs> Bye, you girl. Alright, <laughs> abandon that. Mabel! Oh my. Shoddy, sack of melody in my head that I can't keep, bro. Got me singing like. Na 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 na, every day, like my hot pot stuck on replay, replay. I cannot spend another night in the woods. Let's just kill us all. I haven't eaten in days. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> <laughs> that. that was so funny. That was perfect. Hey, Daddy. I'm here. So strong. Hey, Daddy. <laughs> oh my. This is so sad. I can't believe that David's baby just died. Yeah. And judging by the way he's... Stop. You're la You're smiling. Yeah. This is so sad. I can't believe David's baby just died. And judging by the way he's been while the baby was sick this while the child was alive, he was cried and fasted. But now that it's dead, you eat. I'd like to thank you for watching for your general pleasure. Me and Jonathan here have had a lot of uncut scene hours of viewing the script, prophesizing, and overall just... It is now time. <laughs> it is now time for intermission. Please go grab some popcorn and... <laughs> a large milk. soda. And some candy, too, because we need it. King Saul. King Saul, what do you have to say? Uh, I'm just proud of my boys here, and my friend Shaw here is single. <laughs> <laughs>